Sebastian. Today we're going to be making some copper hydroxide. As you might have noticed, I'm not in my usual garage lab. That's because it's extremely cold outside and I thought maybe I could commandeer the family's kitchen. So that's what I've done and that's why I'm here. <laughs> so what you'll need is some copper hydroxide. You can buy this online from Amazon or eBay. Pay on the taste. Caustic soda or sodium hydroxide. I'm just using regular draining, drain cleaner stuff. Draining, <laughs> drain cleaner stuff. But you can also use like stuff from Amazon, special lab grade stuff if you wish to make tip top quality stuff. You also need some ammonia. Do not omit this, however horrible the smell is. It is required for making this. And if you just add this to this, it, it's really weird because it turns slimy green black. So do not omit this at all. So, let's get started. I'm going to use an Academy beaker for this. And you might have noticed also, I've got a, a brand new hot plate stirrer. I'm really happy about it. So that's what I'm going to use today. So, first up, you're going to measure about 25 grams of copper sulfate. You're going to dissolve that in 250 millilitres of water. I'm going to put on some stirring. What's happening? What's happening to the stir bar? Why is it doing that? There we go. There we go. This might take a bit of time. You might not be able to see it from here, but there are a load of impurities floating around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just pass it through a coffee filter just real quick. There we go. So, while this filters off, we're going to make a sodium hydroxide solution. So, I'm going to do this in a smaller beaker. So, get about 8 grams of sodium hydroxide. Dump it all in there. There it is. And let's add a hundred millilitres of water.
So, as I've said in quite a few of my videos, it's extremely exothermic. So, don't touch the liquid inside until it's fully dissolved and cooled down. This is much quicker than doing it with a glass stir rod. degrees. What is that floating around? side. I can, t I can just move that to the side. No wait, no. And we'll get out our beaker. It is finished. So this is finished filtering. So what we can do is we can empty it into this beaker. Why is it in there? That's strong stirring. So, with strong stirring, I'm going to add 75 millilitres of ammonia bleach. If you're using lab grade 30% ammonia, then use only 25 millilitres. why the stir bar wasn't working is because all the copper hydroxide is precipitated out because of the reaction and now it's turning dark blue. Copper hydroxide and ammonia makes a special complex called Schweitzer's reagent and that's capable of dissolving cellulose like cotton. This is extremely dilute so there's not much point trying to dissolve any amount of cellulose in this. Now I'll just stir the rest. So just to mix it thoroughly, I've just put the stir plate on again. So now I've got my really nearly black solution of that. I'm going to add my sodium hydroxide. Oh, I'm shaking. So you can see it's made a lovely light blue colour. That's because all the copper hydroxide is precipitated out. Now what we have to do is we have to just let it settle for all the water just to settle at the bottom. That's that done. Now 
I just have to wait for all the copper hydroxide to sink to the bottom. The stir bar is having a hard time trying to get through all this gunk. Uh -huh. So, I've let all of the copper hydroxide sink to the bottom, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to decant off most of the water. most of the water. Now I've got most of the water out, I'm going to pass it through a filter. So, Filtering's done, and what I can do, so I can take out the filter now and put it on some paper towels. As you can see, I've recovered quite a bit of copper hydroxide from all that. There's still a paste. Oh, here's my stir bar. <laughs> and, um, but when this dries, it will form a free throwing, a free flowing powder that I can store and use in other reactions. So we'll just let this dry. So now I'm just grinding up my product. And you can see I've got another apparatus there so I can, for another reaction <laughs> I'm going to do. You can see it's a beautiful light blue colour in there. I really can't see it because of the shadow. There you go. It's a beautiful light blue colour. I'm just going to grind this up. It's been about three days since I left it in here. And it's and you need to wait for it to dry and um, until it's like a free flowing powder. So like that. If you have access to any acetone, which is what I'm going to be distilling, um, soon then it will probably be quicker because it will only be a few hours because it's so volatile it will basically decrease the solubility of copper hydroxide from um really low to minute so it will be extremely um easy to dry it but if you don't you just leave it dry like i've done The only dust that comes off, try not to breathe it in, because it is a chemical, and you, and we made it with bleach. So, if there's any um, bleach that hasn't been washed off, it's not going to be exactly nice breathing in bleach vapors. So, thanks for watching. So that was how to make copper hydroxide from copper sulfate, ammonium hydroxide and sodium hydroxide. Thanks so much for watching. I hope to see you in another home science video. Please like this video if you did like it and subscribe for more home science content and ring that notification bell if you want to receive instant notifications of when I upload my videos. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you in another home science video.
Bye!